My name is Margaret Ann Windsor. Uh, the name I have to use is Peggy Ann Dempsey. I married a Childers. Um, I was kidnapped in 41 and brought to Moulton, Alabama. My father is Edward VIII, who was wed to my mom, Claudia Ruth O'Keefe, Windsor, 1935 or 36, before the abdication. He never, in 36, he never married Wallace Simpson. An imposter was used to impersonate my father, and they became the illegal Duke and Duchess of Windsor. He died in 72, was buried at Frogmore, and uh, dig him up, my father, and get the DNA. My father was still alive when I came to Roanoke in October the, it was on the 20th of 86, and so was my mom. Now, I want to get to this. Back in, prior to getting the letter from the FBI, which was June the 23rd of 79, and I thought it was in response to the medical malpractice book I wrote about, Mind Control, uh, and programming used to uh, program people to kill, or they could cure an illness or create it, make it appear of natural cause, etc. It's back to the Tesla files that were stolen in 19, uh, 1930. So what I was going to say here is I believe it was 77, perhaps, that uh, my husband uh, had a U.S. Marshal. At that time, I thought it was Marshal Conright, and that was his name, Marshal, but it wasn't. Later, I found out I spent a few nights at their home back in 82 and Marietta, and um, I saw a picture on the wall, and it was uh, Oklahoma Territory, and it was him, Marshal Conright. So, uh, and I asked his wife, and she says, yes, he is U.S. Marshal, and he was. What I wanted to get to here was when my husband introduced me to him, uh, he was, there was a lot going on to me and my children, and I didn't know about being kidnapped in my real name. I am told I did know subconsciously, and I did remember when I found out in late 83. Uh, but, um, uh, Marshall Conright, one of the things he said to me in the beginning when I met him, he said, I want you to meet me, um, well, he didn't say meet him. He said, I want you to call me when something happens or call him and check in with him, but use the pay phones. Back then they had the pay phones and outside the kind of that you walk into. And uh, he mentioned, which I didn't quite understand at the time, um, Martha Mitchell. And uh, there was conversation and somewhere along the line, I saw a video of what Martha Mitchell was trying to tell back then. She was trying to tell, first of all, about the Watergate uh, and the tapes and break-in and everything. And by the way, there's a Gonzales name that was one of them that broke into Watergate. Gonzales was the name of the doctor back in Atlanta. Uh, a gag order was put on it. Um, he was part of this whole thing. Uh, he was at... Um, Dallas at Park uh, Parkland, and uh, when John Kennedy was taken in, uh, so I don't know he was internist and um, interning is what he was doing. So I don't. I just that's I'm just putting it like it is, and is I can't go into all of it. But what I wanted I've already done it or tried to up here on videos. I've got two video uh, channels or two video uh, put up. What, but before I lose track of what I'm trying to say, uh, Martha Mitchell got in trouble. Her husband was John Mitchell. He was the U.S. attorney for Nixon. Well, the, uh, Nixon even said, and you can Google this, this part of it. Nixon even said if it hadn't been for uh, Martha Mitchell that um, there would have been no Watergate. Well, anyway... Uh, Martha Mitchell was murdered, plain and simple. And in the article I read today, I've already put this up way back. You'd have to filter through to find it, but on more than one uh, video. But it's the reason I'm putting this one up today to add to it. But uh, anyway, Martha Mitchell was phoning the news media and... <laughs> kind of like I've done and everything when I found out my name and all the other that's involved in it. But 
she had government agent a uh, government agency and she said this in this article i read um and i know this because i remember part of it from back then i didn't know how it fit into all this stuff back then uh government agent she said uh shot her up with a cancer and i don't doubt this at all inducing drug but what i've been telling about is mind control which was used in the mind control murders and has been used, and you'll never know how many times. Most people don't even want to talk about it. But anyway, that could have been used on her. I assume it was, but now they could have injected her too. So she was murdered with cancer, and it's, oh yeah, she's just looney tune. Suddenly Martha Mitchell's a looney tune. Okay, John Mitchell, I want to get this in, but uh, and maybe I can keep, I don't go from writing uh, from... I go from memory uh, when I'm doing this. Uh, I don't have the money or the time or any of it. So I sit down and do it. Uh, me and the camera, which doesn't come out very well, I know. But uh, and I'm having some trouble tonight because they've been doing, I'm allergic to chemicals and it bothers me and focusing and it scares me too because I've had a lot done to me. But anyway, they were using some stuff outside the door there uh and it seems to have bothered my focusing anyway uh the thing with uh well it is bothering me <laughs> i'm sitting here by the door too uh <clears throat> martha was killed and i was reading today uh about i was just thinking about her and also what triggered me thinking about it too was I was thinking about <clears throat> my husband's older brother, half-brother, was Lloyd Childers, and he lived in Los Angeles, and he had a brother, Leon, that lived in Oklahoma City, and he was murdered. And, uh, yes, he was, on the table, almost like Steve McQueen, when they went in and uh, cut him up. And I, Dr. Anderson was a doctor, that was a friend of mine that I had worked for years ago, and he was the one that, I already knew it, but he said it to me. He heard the tapes where they killed Steve McQueen, and I did too later. So it wasn't a secret. Uh, but anyway, he was killed in all this, and it's almost, he was on the operating table. And um, John's middle brother, half-brother, Leon, was murdered on, on the table. And uh, then he had a younger brother, Wayne, that lived in Orlando, Florida, Florida, Kissimmee, and that's where John and I were married. And then he moved um, outside Orlando in uh, a very nice family, he and his wife and his son. By the way, his son had worked for uh, Carol Burnett back then. <clears throat> well, he's grown up then when he worked for Carol Burnett, but that's a connection to Hollywood. I was thinking about the older brother because... They were half-brothers, Wayne and uh, Leon and Lloyd. Then John had a sister. Uh, John's mother was um, married to uh, Mr. Childers. He was part Indian, I can't remember. And his first wife was part Indian. But Miss Childers, uh, Porter was her maiden name. She was uh, Caucasian. So she had Laura Childers Klein, who's still alive, and John. Now then, I'm going to say this. When the antifreeze was put in me, April Fool Day of 80, Laura Childers was a part of that. And she, nobody in it has been held accountable. Now I want to go into, uh, she's still there as far as I know. Uh, but I want to go into this that triggered me thinking, of going back and thinking about Martha Mitchell and the U.S. Marshal and all that. Um, and I am losing my train of thought. That stuff is bothering me. Um, Michael Childers, I had, uh, the son of Lloyd. I, back when I first got YouTube, well, first got Facebook, got the phone where I could, uh, uh, get online and get an account, 
uh, I tried to reach Michael Childers because I knew he was in Hollywood and he'd produced the movie. He was a producer and a photographer. And when I Googled him today, he's he was very well known out there. He did a lot of movies, more than I knew he helped produce. The Midnight Cowboy he helped. But then, and I saw that one, but then he had a bunch of them. And uh, I'm having trouble focusing now. Uh, anyway, I tried to reach him. When I got the phone back, it was April of 2012, and I went on Facebook, and I'd never met him. Well, I got a bad reception from him. I, you know, of course, maybe he didn't know who I was, but if you tell him, tell him enough, my goodness, of course he does. So anyway, I didn't contact him anymore. But today, I started thinking about him, and back then about Martha Mitchell. But what triggered it was that I... Googled uh, Michael Childers. Well, he's got a pretty good history. I, I believe he's deceased now. Uh, but anyway, he had Midnight Cowboy. He had Alabama Southern Justice, where it was mind control used in that. Now, I this was before I had put anything on Facebook, I believe. But anyway, he did that movie. He did quite a, produced quite a few movies and his artwork and all of it. Reading his bio today, he was very wealthy. He was single. And uh, I guess in all this, what what about me? <laughs> you know, the children. Uh, now, I can't say anything about Wayne and Grace. Okay, they were nice. And Leon was, and he, of course, was murdered, plain and simple. You can put another spin on it if you want, but that's the truth of the matter. Now, uh, Michael played, here's what got me. He's got a number of movies. He played in Star Trek. He played and, and produced quite a few. But when I saw that in 1995, he actually played John Mitchell, Martha Mitchell's husband, the U.S., attorney under um, Nixon and the Watergate. So I'm going to look here. Martha Mitchell is, no, this is Dorothy Kilgallen. I'm going to jump to her before the tape goes off. Dorothy Kilgallen was supposed to have the link. She was a news, famous newspaper columnist, and she was on to tell the truth. So everybody knew who she was. And there's something to do with Mark Russell, he was a columnist, too, and a friend of hers, but this was a name that I heard often back then. Uh, okay. Even when I was flown out at Mr. Flint's, I heard someone talking about Mark Russell. And so anyway, Dorothy Kilgallen on on um, TV told that she had the link to the Kennedy killing. Well, here's what happened to Martha Mitchell. This is a woman that was very renowned. Everybody knew her. And she's an older woman. She's not a, a real young person. She's either, I don't know how old Martha was, probably late 50s. And suddenly she develops mental illness. You can Google this. And you don't just suddenly develop it like that, especially after you've said you have a link to. Well, the Warren Commission covered it all up anyway. But it's attributed her death was murder. It's attributed to her suddenly developing a mental illness and overdosing on uh, pills, which was a total lie. She was in her New York City townhouse. Okay, that, I don't know when that happened. Yeah, I do. November the 8th, I wrote that down, 65. And there is some, yeah, they would suddenly say she's mentally ill and all this. Uh, and she was suicide. No, uh, mind control was probably used on her. Uh, I'm sure it was. Now, I think that's all I wanted to put up. I'll probably think of something I wanted to add to it. But I guess, really, I was looking back, and I do want to say this. The um, Martha Mitchell and um, John Mitchell, Mitchell, the U.S. Attorney, and by the way, I hope the Alabama uh, U.S. Senator... Uh, sessions has been okay. I think it would be the change where some things could get prosecuted. I think it, he's a good man, okay? Now then, I have lost my train of thought because something they, I'm allergic to chemicals and it, uh, 
makes my immune system to, uh, attack itself too, and I'm babbling. Um, okay, John Mitchell was U.S. Attorney under Nixon in the Watergate, okay, and Martha Mitchell was murdered. She was trying to tell things. Gonzalez was one of the guys that broke into Watergate. Gonzalez is the one that's in Atlanta, I think still practicing a doctor who should have been locked up a long time ago and put away. Uh, now then, he's the one that, and I did look this up, and I had it up on some other videos. They're up on uh, uh, more than two or three about this. Uh, it was at a point that I went to his office. He offered me coffee, and everybody knows I love coffee. And uh, he put something in it. I passed out. I, well, I didn't pass out. I knew what was happening. I was dragged out to his car and put in the car and carried across the state, well, not state line, uh, uh, city limits of Atlanta to College Park, where the uh, college, uh, the uh, trolley tracks are. And everybody that's living in Atlanta, I don't know if they're still there or not, they were in 82. Uh, there was a clinic there, and it was still there in 82. It wasn't a big one. It was a small, kind of uh, yucky, really, according to uh, clinics. I was dragged into there, and I can remember thinking there's people in the waiting room that if I could only cry out, and then later when I was able to remember all this, I thought it wouldn't have done me any good. They're doctors, and so I'm just this person being dragged through the, you know. So they drug me to the back, and if you're going the way I'm looking at you, I'm looking, well, I hope the way I'm looking through here, I was taken in the room on the right. To the left, when they put me on the table and they put a phone behind my head, and there was a doctor behind me. They had caps on them. <laughs> I looked across the hall, and I was looking for help. And there was about five or six doctors standing there in a huddle. And uh, through it all, they did not make any effort. They weren't there to help me. In fact, the phone call that was being placed and or was in there with them. The phone was behind me and Gonzalez was standing over me and this doctor that was waiting for the phone call was behind my head here. Okay, uh, the, f the phone call came through and Gonzalez, uh, I remember they were going to lobotomize me if the phone call to come through with whatever they uh, were demanding of Great Britain to keep me alive and my you know, my brain intact, uh, came through. Now, I remember Gonzalez with that sick grin on his face and me lying there helpless saying, you're okay now. So now I want to fast forward to uh, working at the DA's office in 1980 after again they tried to kill me with antifreeze. April Fool Day of 80 after I had a letter from the U.S. Attorney, William Harper, who by the way was a friend. Uh, he and I can't remember the other assistant, Baker, James Baker. Okay, that letter was June 23rd of 79. Then I had ongoing investigation, national security involved. Now then, April Fool Day of 80, I'm given antifreeze and should have died. By any means, I should have died. I hope someone has video of what happened when I tried to get a simple talk screen to see if it could be uh, neutralized or something. I didn't know what was in me. Now, I was illegally taken across the state line by Lana Dempsey. That's where I was put when I was kidnapped and brought over here. My name stolen, given the name of Peggy Dempsey Childers. I worked for the District Attorney Fred Simpson, Madison County, Huntsville, Alabama. And that's uh, NASA and the Redstone Arsenal Command Center, Marshall Space Flight Center and all that. Uh, so I worked for him, and uh, I'm losing my train of thought, so this stuff, this must be pretty bad that they used out there tonight, this afternoon. Uh, now I'm losing 